Hey guys, in this quick tutorial, I'm going to show you how to blur a background in Adobe Photoshop. So you can see I have an image here and you can download this from the video description if you'd like to follow along. We have some very, uh, very cleverly balanced stones. However, we have uh, a digger in the background and the background quality isn't especially great. And we'd like to blur the background anyway and put some more focus on the stones. So the way I'm going to do this is first of all make a selection of the stones. You can of course pen tool this if you're hardcore, but I'm going to use the quick selection tool. And we'll do this nice and quick. Remember we just want to get the stones or for your image the subject. So this might be a person, it might be a cat, a dog, a duck. I don't know, we seem to have an obsession with animals on this channel for some reason. <laughs> So there we go. We could go and do these gaps as well, but I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling a little bit lazy today, as you can probably tell. So let's just go around there. Oh, I'm going to have to zoom in a bit here. I can't let that stand. So we'll have to go in here and just capture a little bit of that selection as well. Remember, if you'd like to subtract from a selection, hold down Alt or Option and drag instead. And the longer you spend getting a good selection, it will increase the quality of your result. But for time's sake, let's just assume that this is absolutely perfect and you're really impressed with what I've done. Okay, so we have a solid selection. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask and then I'm going to duplicate this layer with Command or Control J, hide the top one and on the bottom one this is just going to be the background. So I've got one that is just the stones and then one that is just the background. And for the background one I'm going to I'm going to be a good boy and name my layer so I don't forget. And then I'm going to convert this to a smart object. The reason I'm doing this is because if I convert this to a smart object, I can apply smart filters which are fully editable. Otherwise, the effects are permanent. And that's what I'm going to do now. Go to filter. We're not going to be doing any Gaussian blur today. Absolutely not. We are going to be using this feature, Tilt Shift, which, which is fantastic for adding gradual blurs, especially for something like this where we have distance in the background. So I can move this pin here. And this part here between the two solid lines will always be in focus. And then from the solid line to the dashed line is going to graduate from a blur of zero here on the solid line up to a maximum blur on the dashed line. And that maximum blur is determined by this value here. So if I crank this up to 99, you can see it's going from 0 to 99 over a very short distance. And I can, of course, extend that distance and it's a bit more gradual. So let's define the area that I want in focus, which is going to be where the stones are. Remember, the stones will need to match the background or it will look a bit weird. And I don't really want too much of the foreground blurred. So I'm going to go for something like this. And then I'm going to bring this one down here. So it kind of matches the horizon line. I don't want the blur to kind of increase as we go further into the distance where the sky is. Now that is a bit too extreme. So let's bring it down to maybe 25. But remember, this is a smart filter. So it's still fully editable. And that isn't 25 tan, that is 24. There we go. And if you're feeling cheeky, check high quality, although it probably doesn't really make a difference here. And let's click OK. We've added our gradual tilt shift blur, but it's blurred the stones as well. However, because we planned this in advance, we can turn our stones back on. And there we go, we've got the stones back. But there is a problem. You can probably see we have this horrible blurry effect around the edge. And that is, of course, where we blurred the stones. And that is no good. So what we're going to need to do is double click the smart object thumbnail. This will take us inside that smart object. And you can think of this as a document within a document. So let's duplicate the background layer just in case something goes wrong, which is entirely possible. We'll hide that one. This is going to be our, this is going to be our secret backup. There we go. And with the main layer selected, what I'm going to do is the goal here is to remove the original stones, or if you have a different image, the original subject. So there's a few different ways you can do this. If you're using Photoshop's new beta, generative AI is gonna be the way to go. But if you're not, <laughs> if you're still a peasant like me on good old standard Photoshop, just make this selection here around the stones. 
There we go. And then we'll go up to Edit and Content Aware Fill. And this still works fine. Just the generative AI stuff is a, a bit more advanced. So hopefully you shouldn't have to do anything here. Click OK. And it's done an OK job. Not too bad. You can see it's kind of plastered in a bit of a gap there. I will merge these two layers together by selecting them and pressing Command or Control E. And then I'm just going to tidy this up by grabbing the clone stamp tool over here. I've got a nice big brush with a little bit of feathering, so a hardness of zero. And I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click to sample this bit of bush, this tree over here, whatever it is, this foliage. And now I've sampled it, you can see I can kind of go and paint it in anywhere. So I'm just going to very quickly and lazily just remove that digger tractor-esque thing. Oh, there's a piece over there as well. Oh, it's added more tractor. That's no good. No, it's not a tractor, is it? It's a digger. I know what a digger is. Right, I'm also going to do this over here. And essentially what we want to do is we just, we want to kind of cut in to where the stones were, or if you have a different image, where your subject is. Because we're trying to get rid of any sort of halo around the edge. So all, everything we're kind of putting into the middle, this big mess here, isn't going to be visible. We just need to kind of try and blend it all as best we can. That looks pretty decent now. So what I'm going to do is I'll, if I go to close this document down, it will say, do you want to save it? I will say yes, of course. And those changes will be updated in the main document. So you can see here, if I zoom in nice and close, it's blurred out a lot of the low quality image. And if I turn this back on, you can see I probably need to do a bit of cleanup around the edge, but I can do that because it's all on a layer mask. Everything is in focus and we don't have that horrible kind of halo thing around the edge. And then what I can do is go to double click on this smart filter and that blur is a little bit extreme, but it was good to get the positioning right like that. I'm going to drop it down to 15, let's say. Turn it off. This is where we started, <laughs> obviously with the addition of a digger, which is no longer there. And if I turn it on, this is where we've ended up. We've introduced a subtle and realistic blur and the subject or the stones are still in focus. And there we go. That is how to blur a background in Adobe Photoshop. Take care and I'll see you next time.